We're going to design a logo based on a customer brief. They want it to be exciting, cutting edge and all of these other words. They want us to use the letters H-A-H which stands for hair ache hair stuff. Now while I'm doing this I'm going to use a number of keyboard shortcuts and I've depicted those down the bottom here for you. So let's begin. Select the H-A-H and the first one plus on my keyboard to create a duplicate. I like to leave my original uh, information available to refer to at any time. We need to pick a typeface that matches the brief. So, Control T, Character Format Docker. I'll select the drop down font list, and as I hover down this list, you'll notice the text on screen updates. You must have your text selected for that. I'm using the down arrow on my keyboard to go through the text. I know the font I want to use is called Ruark, so I'm going to type RU and then hit enter and automatically that is selected. I've chosen this typeface because of the unique brush strokes and because it's going to be usable for us in some other lessons for me to teach you some interesting materials. This typeface is not available in your X4 uh, installation however there are other fonts you can use that are just as suitable for this purpose. Also bear in mind that CorelDRAW X4 will use other fonts installed by other programs to your Windows system. You can purchase fonts, place fonts in your system and CorelDRAW will be able to use them all. I'm now going to break this string of text apart. Let's come up to Arrange and break artistic text apart and now we've got individual characters to work with. I want to place each character inside of a circle, but I want that circle to be rough and match the characters. So the best way I can think to do that is select my text tool, type a capital O, and then pick tool and we'll make that O the Ruark font. And of course the Ruark font matches the roughness and hence our design keeps its integrity. You notice that I'm resizing by pulling on the black corner handle of this object. Whenever you select an object the first time, you can see the scale handles or sizing handles in the middle there. If you click a second time, you bring up the rotation handles. Now I'm going to use the rotation handle. And in the middle there on those side handles there, they're what we call skew handles. Just pop that there. I'm going to squash it up a little. Finger on the shift key, and that, of course, whatever you do, what it does is it forces it to do from the center. So you can see how the top's coming down and the bottom's going out. So it's sizing from the center. And that looks much more circular now. So I'll place that there, click again. I'm going to rotate back to the original position. OK, resize up a little, finger on the shift key. Now I think that looks great. However, it's slightly weighted on the left-hand side. So we're going to edit the letter O you can see here. So I'll hit Z on my keyboard for the zoom tool, which is here. Click and drag to zoom in on that character. Before you can edit or alter the shape of any object that's created with a tool, in other words, the, the rectangle tool or the ellipse tool, in this case the text tool, you need to select the object, right now as you can see it's a Ruark font, and come up to Arrange and down to Convert to Curves, or use Control q as the shortcut. What that does is that now converts this to an editable object. So what we can now do is select the shape tool and you'll notice all of these little nodes will appear around our object and that's how this object is shaped. If I click on one of those nodes and drag, well as you can see I can begin to reshape the object. Control Z and Control Z to undo. I can also double click and add my own nodes and we'll learn more about nodes as we go along. For right now I want to delete a number of nodes. So I'm going to draw a marquee around all of the nodes I want and hit delete on my keyboard. And then I can just pull up here a little. If I select the outer edge and just simply pull or drag on it, I can begin to reshape. Now a few more nodes I'd like to delete down there like that. And what I'm trying to do is simply get the, the front part of this uh, circle nearer where the actual start of it begins. And that's not too bad, as you can see. It still looks a little weighted on the left-hand side, so I'm going to move the whole left-hand side over. I'm going to do this by selecting a number of nodes, but this time finger on my Shift key so that I can continue selecting, and they will all stay selected as a group. Once I have them all, let go of the Shift key, click once on one of the nodes, and just drag over. And as you can see, I'm thinning out the left-hand side and that weighting looks a lot better. I'm very happy with that. 
So let's zoom back out, F4. And now, of course, what we want to do is use this same circle on the other characters. So I'll just pop those over there like that. And what I'm going to do is create a duplicate by clicking plus on my keyboard. Pop that over the top of the other H. And then I'm going to use the mirror buttons. First of all, I'm going to mirror vertically, and that sort of flips it upside down. And mirror horizontally, flips it over to the other side. Now, as you can see, even though it's the same circle, it looks a little different because it's positioned different. Plus, on my keyboard again, pop that over the letter A. This time I'm going to rotate a little, so it doesn't look the same as the first one. And what do you think? I think they all look reasonably individual, and I really like that look. Because of the unusual nature of this design, simply I'm going to place each character in what I believe by eye is the right center. And that looks pretty good. I'm now going to select both objects, the H and the outside object, and combine together. So combine appears on the property bar. This makes one object out of the two objects. We're going to do that to each one. And you'll notice they instantly all become the one color because they are now one object rather than two. Let's apply some color. First of all, I'm going to go with a deep purple type color and uh, magenta. And we'll go with orange. And I think that looks fairly good. I think we're matching the brief quite nicely. It always pays to work to your brief. I'd like to crop off the top of this. But before I do that, I want to close the gap up a little here. And then I'm going to just align them. So by selecting and then selecting the alignment toolbox, bring that up over here, I can choose center alignment. Notice how there's a line through the character, it's like a horizontal alignment. Click apply and you'll notice they're now aligned. You must have objects selected if you want to apply a crop and that's what we're going to do. So I've selected all the objects I want to crop, select my crop tool, place that over the top, everything inside of this rectangular area will remain, everything outside is going to disappear then double click when you're finished and look at that. I think that's a really brilliant design. What do you think? I think it really matches the brief. The last thing we need to do of course is to place our hair ache hair stuff underneath. So I'll shrink this down a little, select this, plus on my keyboard and we'll just pull our duplicate over there, stretch that out. Now a really modern way of working with typefaces is to stretch or if you like increase the space between each character. But what I'm going to do first is choose another font. I'd like to go with Arial Rounded. I think that better suits this particular style. Now whenever you have a font selected, if you choose the Shape tool, two arrows will appear. We call these kerning arrows. If I pull this arrow to the right, you can see how it's increasing the spacing between each character. If we had a couple of lines of text here, this would increase the spacing between the lines. Well, that looks pretty good. So I'll stretch that out, and then I'm going to scale that back down like that. And what do you think? In fact, I might stretch just a little bit more. I'm going to click my space bar, and that takes me back to my pick tool line that up like that and I think that looks fairly good. If I change that to an orange color well we now have our logo. What do you think? There's one last special effect I'd like to show you. So I'll select my zoom tool and just zoom in so you can easily see this. Up to effects and down to bevel. This will open the bevel docker. There are two options here. One is a bevel and I'll show you that first of all. So I'll select my first object Soft Edge, look at the appropriate settings I have here. Under Shadow Color, I just want to show you that's the No Color Well, and under Light Color, it's actually the color white. Click Apply, and look at the effect. If you lower this down, and I'll lower this down 0.5, just to show you what it does, click Apply. See how it's flattening off the, the top of the ridge. I like the high ridge, so I'm going to go with the 1.5 and click Apply. Now on this one here, I'll show you the other effect, and that's the emboss. If I simply click Apply, I think the emboss effect is a really cool effect also. Either of those would work really well for this scenario. However, for me, I'm going to go with the full bevel. I'll select the other one on the edge there and Apply, and then zoom back out. And I think that's a really edgy look that matches our brief.
Finally, select everything and group. So I'll select the group option up here. And so we've got a number of objects grouped ready to go for us to use in the rest of our designs.